Good morning. You may be familiar with the downstairs area of my apartment, which I lovingly and tongue in cheekingly refer to as the chateau. And in the past, we had some projects to move forward to create the chateau, it was the room to chateau. And that was mostly focused on the downstairs, along with, you know, installing this bed upstairs to make the distinction between the two. Before that, there was only downstairs. There was no such thing as an upstairs. But if we go upstairs, you might notice a little bit of a deficiency. If and when you ever happen to get up here, you might notice something in relatively quick fashion. And that is that there simply isn't a whole lot going on up here. Now, to be totally fair, I spend my time up here sleeping. That's it. I don't charge my phone up here anymore. I don't use my phone up here anymore. And I try not to even read up here. Although putting a reading light in over here does sound like a pretty good idea. I don't even make the bed unless I'm gonna film. I just get out, go home, or go downstairs, you know, and then come back and go back to bed. This is just a sleeping area. However, in the mornings or when I'm kind of chilling, it would be nice to make it a little cozier. And the first start for that, or the first step, would be to put something on the walls. Now, what am I gonna put on the wall is really the question because as you can see, they're, they're just, there's a bunch of blank walls in a corridor and it wraps around my bed and you're limited, obviously, for space. I do have, on the one hand, this giant painting, this beautiful painting that you may recognize from my old office that my friend Hillary did for me and it's been homeless kind of ever since. We've hung it in two different locations and then it's just been sitting next to my bed or my couch here, trying to stay protected as long as possible. And this is the centerpiece. This is the main thing. I used to live on the ocean, miss the ocean. Love to have this as a key central piece. And then there's just some other stuff that I thought would be fun along the way that would tie in a little bit of my history living around the world and just remind me that there is a broader world out there. And that's kind of where we're headed with this. But before I can make too many more decisions on what I want to hang and where, it's probably a good idea to do a little bit of planning, which I've done some planning drawing in my notebooks as I do. And then I enlisted some expert help from my buddy Sam, who happens to be a furniture designer and has some mad skills with sketching and a little bit of 3D modeling. Why am I drawing this sky object? I don't know. Maybe I should. Getting yourself in trouble here. And while I want whatever decorations I put up there to remain in the warm, cozy vibe that I've created for my tiny little palace here, I do want to make sure that it, it sticks to its own theme outside of that. So I've done a little bit of thinking, a little bit of looking around, and there are some things that I want to gather out in town. And the shelving makes the most sense, like adding some nice, hopefully warm wooden shelving that matches the coffee station in the corner as close as we can. And uh, yeah, provides an opportunity to put some things up there that aren't just like flat paintings on the wall. But while I ordered this on the internet and while this was done for me by a friend, I'm gonna need to find some stuff, you know, out and about in town that, yeah, just I'd rather do that than order it online. All right, so there are a number of things that I'd like to pick up get ready to put. Oh, they've got globes too. Okay, so it's interesting. This uh, place, Nature et Découverte, Nature and Discoveries, has just the most random assortment of stuff, all kinds of things. It's kind of a fun store just to walk into and see what's going on. But what they have that I really want is a scratch map, like a global uh, world map that you scratch up with a Z-Bin. There are a bunch of different ones out there, but they have the particular brand that I want. It's an English brand, I think Lucky's. My buddy Matt has one. I've seen it in person, I really like it. Seems kind of classy for something that, I used to think it was kind of a cheesy idea, but now I'm, I'm kind of into it. I think it'll look good. I feel like that place is like if REI and Sky Mall had a baby, but I got the map. Gotta be careful with the backpack on. I also really want this globe lamp in this uh, brocante. So this brocante is in the 11th, not far from some really good coffee that I just had. I was gonna have it Lindsay. I don't even know the name of this place. I'll drop it on my Mapster if you want to find it. It's on my Mapster, how about that? But they've got these globe lights that I really liked the last time we were here. So I came back, they still have the one I really want. It should be the right size to put uh, on, on the shelf. I think it'll work. The globe is made of glass. I didn't realize that. I thought it'd be paper, but it's like a nice antique globe uh, that is made out of glass. But that means that I need like some packing materials to make sure that it gets here safely. Uh, somebody a long time ago brought me this delightful Washington State bag. I thought I had more bubble wrap. Dang. And of course, she's closed. Yeah. But I figured out the name of the place finally. Trolle Puce. Okay, there we go. Rue de Marché Popincourt. Popincourt. I think that's how you say that name. But anyways, it'll work out. 
I'll just come back after I have coffee with Anna and, uh, you know, throw it in the bag and away we'll go. Hopefully I have time. I have an appointment this afternoon, so it'll be a little bit tight, but eh, what's life without a couple of tight squeezes here and there, right? Empty bag. Uh, uh, coffee shots. What makes Paris Paris, but also what makes it hard. Is that there's too much stuff to there's do? no just like, it's like you have to know where the cute little tiny street is that has a cute little tiny store on it. And that's where you're gonna find your dream table. Unless they're always closed when you're trying to, <laughs> let's see what happens when we go around the corner here. Please be open. Yes. Ish. They had these yesterday. Oh yeah, they're open. Oh, perfect. Voilà. Ça marchera? C'est pas mal. C'est pas mal. Quand elle m'a dit que c'est en verre. Euh... C'est en verre. C'est le plus ancien en verre. Oui. Je sais pas si on vous a expliqué. Mais non, non. Euh... Est-ce qu'il y a une histoire avec ou? I oh, never noticed. Did you notice this guy? Look at this camera. Oh, that's so cool. Well, he said that I brought, should have brought enough stuff, uh, and that the globe itself is crystal, so it's pretty tough, which is good. And he also told me that it's the last original that they have, which I'll just choose to believe, I guess. But he was pointing out the lines on the other maps where, like, basically they'd existed on other globes and had been repurposed either. The way he put it was they'd been given new life. So either they'd been put on a, a globe lamp before, or maybe they were coming off of, uh, you know, another globe, but they, the slices of the globe had been repurposed onto a new globe. And he said that the one that I have is old. It's the oldest one they have and it's the last original they have. So it's perfect. That's, I wanted it because it's very old uh, and it's very clearly very old. The, the borders and so forth are very different from modernity made here in Paris. Um, but that's a bonus. I didn't realize that it was an original. I didn't realize that it was the way that it had been made. So I've got a real legit antique and I managed to negotiate the price down. What well, was like 180 is what it was marked at. So then I paid 150. Seems worth it to me to have a little piece of history. And I love globes and uh, more maps, more globes in my apartment. The happier I'll be. The Bocanista are the famous booksellers along the Seine in those little green bins. And I've never actually bought anything from one of them. So it's kind of cool to go see if I can find one of these old books that'll make a nice decoration. I don't exactly know how much I should be paying for them. I think from these guys, the prices are gonna be higher than I would like to pay. I know that they're marked pretty high, but hey, it's for the story and for the experience in the end, right? Should look really nice. Let's see what we can't find. C'était ce qu'il y avait, roman d'avant, oh, wow. des anciens livres. I found some books that I'd like to actually put underneath. I found a rotary phone at the place that I got the globe. I'm thinking about going back and getting it because this looks kind of classy. And then I've always wanted some of the old books that you see down at the Book in East. And this guy's been doing this in his retirement for, I think he said about 20 years now, 10, 20 years in his free time when he just feels like it. But uh, good to snag some old, like, 100-year-old books, throw up on the shelf and uh, look kind of classy. Maybe even read them occasionally. We'll see. Merci beaucoup. Merci. But now that I have most of this stuff gathered, and put there are a couple things I have to actually put together. For one, I've been looking forward to this, but I think it's going to take me a while to do the scratch map uh, and scratch all the countries I've been to. I've been to something like 41 or something countries. I know this is going to take me a hot second to get done. The other thing that I didn't realize is going to take me as long as I think it's going to now is this elephant head. I got this because I just thought it looked really cool. I ordered what was supposed to be my Halloween costume from these guys, and it all came way too late for Halloween. However, when I saw this, I was like, this would look really cool above my door, which will go above the map and above Sam's special edition, which we're going to get to here soon as well. But the thing is, you have to put it together yourself. And what I didn't know is the difficulty level on this thing is, is, is challenging, which when you're folding paper, seem, it's a little intimidating. Uh, so thankfully, I've got a couple days to get this thing put together. Hopefully, it doesn't take me that long. I, 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 should, I need to get started on this right now.
I wasn't really paying attention to how long it took me to make this trial heart, but I guess 20 to 30 minutes based on how far the sun has moved at least. I feel confident. I was, I was like, you know what, screw it. Let's just try it with super glue and see what happens. That's the only glue I have. And uh, made a little bit of a tiny mess on it. Not much though, feel pretty confident. It started out a little bit unsure, ended up good, but um, this is significantly more pieces to the, this, this. <sighs> <sighs> is unforgiving when you make small errors, but I think I got myself a pretty handsome looking trunk. If there's any day you want the espresso machine to break, That's it is the last day. No, no, cat, no, no filming. Oh God. Getting, this is day three. This thing is taking a while. And just like that, I think we have everything ready. Only missing one or two small things that I might want to throw in later, but let's put this stuff up on the wall. So this is how far in these are going to be? How far in, what do you mean? So we've decided to start with the uh, easiest first and work our way up to it. It's probably going to be the trickiest in the corner. And then we'll end with the guy that's going to be above the door here because we don't want to accidentally knock it about in the midst of setting up all the other ones. We have six shelves to hang, seven shelves to hang. Sam has been kind enough to help. He's also brought the creme de la creme, the final touch to the whole space, which we're going to put up here in the corner. And you'll see that soon. It's going Some to be... might say the most important touch. Some might say the most important touch. Cream of the cream. That also makes no sense when you think about it. But <laughs> yeah, we're going to put all that up and, uh, and, and snip, snap, snoop. Before you know it, it's all going to look fantastically different. Ready. Screwing the leather into the wood first, or screwing the leather into the wall first, and you know what? We'll, we'll figure it out. In the wall, yeah. Yeah, well, let's let's just go for it. The hard thing is that this guy's not—it's not the same width here as it is here because the wood kind of has a curve to it's it. A so natural flow has a natural flow something. that's making the math a little trickier. So this guy is going to end up being a little bit higher than this guy, just to keep the same level down here. <laughs> Level. <laughs> it's loud. Yeah, it looks good. Well, I think you don't necessarily need to. You don't think we need to worry about screwing it in? Need, no. We, we can worry about it in the future if we need to, once stuff is crashing down. <laughs> so I'm revisiting my drawings here because the boards that I got are actually 10 centimeters shorter than the ones that we did the original designs for. So I'm just kind of looking back at how I had it done, but also having to actually measure out how this fits. And even though it's for the upstairs, I want to make sure that visually it feels centered on the TV because I kind of redesigned everything earlier downstairs to be centered around the TV. It just made the most sense to put that, you know, right in the middle uh, so that it was pleasing, visually pleasing. And then I oriented the art around it and everything looks really good from down here. So I want to keep that feeling. If you're sitting down here, you look up, it doesn't jar you because it's off. That means that one of these shelves needs to be centered directly above the TV and it happens to be about the exact width of the art plus the gaps between the art, which makes the measuring easier because we already know roughly how that's going to look. But then it's time to decide how far apart the shelves should um, be. And then also instead of four shelves, should we go for five? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make sure my measurements are correct. Then we're going to drill some holes. I don't know if you noticed that I was also vacuuming as we went because the, the red brick dust is insane coming out of here. So just easier to shove the vacuum right up underneath it and gather it. And I'm really happy with how that worked. It worked beautifully, kept from getting hardly any dust on the floor. Uh, so this is going to be a nice clean experience, especially when we're over like some electronics, my TV, that kind of stuff. Very important. I really like this shelf though. This is a really good addition. I'm very happy with how this is going. Yeah, isn't that a cute little drill? The first one is a success and looks phenomenal. This is making me feel really good. I feel like all the triple, I, everything, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna really come together. The 
experiment here is a light that uh, Sam made. Yeah. Sam makes. Where's my Leatherman? I was gonna. Everything is. Ever. It's it's such a mess in here. Yeah. If you want to do the spiel. So the everything is made in Europe. I make the light base here in France. And I paint them. The shades are spun in the UK, and the cords and almost all the plugs and all those components are made in Italy. Everything is fully recyclable, so the legs are made of steel, which is like the most recycled material in the world. The shades made of aluminium, which is the easiest to recycle in the world. Cords are fabric, which is super easy to recycle as well, obviously yeah. e-waste type stuff. You didn't notice the little spray logo on the front, it's a preview of what you're going to get. It's fine. With some delightfully drawn explanations. He's a furniture designer as well, so the drawings are all, They're all, mine. all his. And uh, this is exciting. This feels this feels premium. Oh, voila. I love the orange. And here it is. It's a very happy little lamp that's gonna sit and enjoy looking at the world map. Is the plan? Smart light, so I can actually you'll see it'll it'll add a lot of depth to the the um, the lighting in the background as well. But they're just really fun, very expressive lamps, and this one feels very bright and hopeful to me. So I like it, especially yes. the orange. Yeah, four different colors, red, orange, green, blue. And I think there's a discount code below. I'll link yep. below if you want to get one of these. They'll ship anywhere. They're expensive to ship to the States, like 50 bucks to ship to the States. 40 euros or something. So like, like 40 that. euros, $50, something like that, but worth it. If you want to get one of these fun little expressive lights, they look good on bookshelves. Yeah, That's check nice. it out in the link below. Go follow them on Instagram. It'll be a good combination. Let's put this up there. Yeah. What a treat. I think it's all come together at this point. I haven't fully decided what to put on a couple of the shelves, and I'm not 100% sold on how the uh, fairy lights or the Christmas lights came together, but I'm gonna keep playing around with that over time, and eventually it'll settle in. I'm really happy with how everything turned out, though, and it's so nice for some of the practical elements, like getting stuff off the floor, especially my backpack and my, basically my camera bags are always getting in the way, as well as that leather bag. Uh, it's just really nice to be able to put them up and uh, display them, but also get them out from underfoot, which has been huge. The other thing you might notice are the electrical cables. I had a whole system set up with a switch bot to push the button on that power strip and I was gonna hide it all the way up in the corner, but unfortunately the, it's, it doesn't work. So I have to keep it down where I can physically push the button for now. So hopefully I can hide all of the electrical cables and get them up in the corner sooner than later. If you have a good like remote button pushing solution, I'll take you up on it and I might have to try and get the Wi-Fi plugs again. They didn't work before, but I might have to give that another try. Overall, super grateful. Thanks to Sam for all the help. It was really nice. He, he spent half the day with me or more really just helping to hang everything. He's obviously a very skilled designer and go follow him on Instagram. And if you're interested in grabbing one of those lights, grab one. I'm gonna give one to my patron producer of the day, Susan Van Wickler, who's been one of my longest standing and biggest patrons of all time. And it's just perfect timing that she ends up being the patron producer today. And so as a thank you to her, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send her one of these, assuming that she wants it. I'll reach out to her first and make sure that that's cool, but I wanna make sure to send her one as a thank you. And as a way of supporting Sam as well. And if you want to support him, uh, this, this lamp business for him is fairly new and it's really exciting and they're I'm really really happy with it even happier with it than I thought it was gonna be so jump on it I give him some support the one thing that did you might notice the ladder is back up the elephant fell down during the night this is not a promotion but the only adhesives that work on these walls are actual command strips not like anything else apparently so I'm gonna I'm rehanging it right now you'll see it all in time uh, you know as it evolves a little bit here um, but Really, really happy with how it all turned out. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to do that and I will see you bright and early one of these mornings sometime soon with more fun and exciting things. Thanks to my patrons as always. And uh, yeah, see you in a couple of days or a week. You know, whenever, I'll see you soon.